Welcome to this demonstration of how to provision new servers using Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager templates in a Microsoft Private Cloud environment. Microsoft Private Cloud Database Solutions are the result of a long-term strategic alliance with Hewlett Packard to deliver a new class of applications for enterprise customers. HP Enterprise Database Consolidation Appliance Hardware, optimized for SQL Server, allows for deployment of a private cloud in weeks, not months. Proven technology from Microsoft, including the Windows Server 2008 R2 operating system, Microsoft System Center products, and SQL Server 2008 R2 data management software, enables you to reduce implementation risk while scaling your business. With Microsoft Private Cloud Database Solutions, you can consolidate thousands of databases and reduce capital and operations costs to achieve a low overall cost of computing. The HP Enterprise Database Consolidation, or DBC appliance, comes with the Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager self-service portal pre-configured to efficiently manage resources. In this demo, we'll show you how to use the self-service portal templates to streamline the provisioning of resources through an easy-to-use web interface. Specifically, you'll see how user requests are integrated into a workflow process that supports administrative approvals and operational coordination. While using the self-service portal enables new service requests from business users, supported by a workflow-enabled approvals process, data center administrators still retain the ability to deploy virtual machines directly from the System Center Virtual Machine Manager. The SCVMM is an efficient alternative for administrators. First, let's see how data center resources are managed in Virtual Machine Manager. We'll do this from the role of Data Center Administrator. This Data Center Management screen allows us to configure connections to the VMM server, SAN devices, load balancers, networks, and Active Directory domains. Once we've created a network, we can then assign it to a service. We can also configure the chargeback costs for reserved memory and storage quotas. Before end users can take advantage of data center services, however, application owners or business unit IT administrators must register their business unit through the self-service portal. Let's switch to the role of application owner and register the finance business unit. Here, we provide some basic information such as the business unit name, business unit code, and a contact email address. Optionally, we can specify a priority for the request. We can also specify additional users to be administrators for this business unit. Once this information has been completed, we'll submit the request for a new business unit. The request has now been submitted and is awaiting approval from the data center administrator. Now, we're going to return to the Data Center Administrator role. This page lists all of the requests that we need to manage. We can see that the most recent request needs approval from the Finance Business Unit. As Data Center Administrator, we can provide approval for this new Business Unit registration request. The request now has an approved status and will show up in the list of business units for this private cloud. At this time, no infrastructures have been assigned to this business unit. An infrastructure is a collection of services and service roles that a business unit needs for a specific purpose. Switching back to the application owner role, let's create a new infrastructure request. First, let's enter some basic information about this request. If we want, we can specify the priority of the request. Next, we'll enter forecasted values for all storage and memory resources required by this infrastructure. This is for planning purposes only. Actual chargebacks are based on quotas that we define for the service. Now, we'll save this form and move on to the next step, where we'll provide specific information about the service and service roles that will be part of this infrastructure. 
infrastructures must contain at least one service to coordinate the resources needed for a specific function. Services are each allocated a portion of the infrastructure's memory and storage. In this infrastructure request form, we'll define a single service to start us out. We'll select the only environment we have defined. The service quota defines the subset of available memory and storage capacity that is allocated to this specific service. Since we're provisioning only a single service, we'll allocate all infrastructure resources to this service. Next, we'll specify that our service will use the production network. If multiple networks were available, we could also select a second network to use as a backup. In the Members section, we're going to define the advanced operators who will have access to this infrastructure once it's provisioned. The virtual machines contained in a service role perform a single function and share some configuration settings. For example, to run a database application, an application owner or business unit IT administrator can request a service role containing virtual machines to provide SQL Server data services. The business unit IT administrator can request additional virtual machines for the service role as appropriate. These are the virtual machine templates in the System Center VMM library that have been made available by the data center administrator. We can choose which virtual machine templates this service is allowed to use. In this case, we'll choose a SQL Server 2008 R2 template for our database service role. Once all the steps are completed, we're presented with a summary view of our service request. Submitting a request creates a database entry that outlines the business unit's infrastructure requirements. No assets have been provisioned at this time. Here, we'll return to the Data Center Administrator role and take a closer look at approval and provisioning. The Data Center Administrator first looks to validate resource availability and capacity. Next, the Administrator configures the appropriate resources and allocates them. On our Requests page, we see an infrastructure service request in a submitted state that was created by the Finance Business Unit. We also can see that the onboarding request has been approved. First, we'll review the service request. Highlighted items are important to review. We'll keep the default host group shown here. We need to define where the template library for this service will be located. We only have one library defined on this appliance, so we'll pick that. Now, we're going to define the VMM library server where our offline virtual machines will be stored. We can also validate the requested users. We'll review the requested networks and verify that the network has enough IP addresses in the available pool. If there was a request for an additional network, we would now create that network and make it available to this infrastructure. We could customize our quota reservation costs at this point as well. Now, we'll save and close the service request. In a similar fashion, we can review the service role and virtual machine template requests for approval. All status indicators show a green checkmark, indicating that the request is ready to be approved or rejected. We'll click the Approve link under Selected Requests to the right. We can provide a short message to the Business Unit IT Administrator or Application Owner and then click Save. At this point, the infrastructure has been provisioned and is ready for the Business Unit IT Administrator or Application Owner to use. Now, we'll become the Application Owner again to demonstrate self-service provisioning. The self-service portal enables application owners and business unit IT administrators to create or delete, start or stop virtual machines, and to access reports. First, we'll search for virtual machines associated with our business unit. 
No virtual machines for the finance business unit have been created yet, so let's go ahead and create one. First, we'll select our business unit. The fields for infrastructure, service, and service roles are automatically populated because there's only one infrastructure and one service and one services role defined for that service. We'll create two virtual machines. We can name each virtual machine individually or use a single name with an added suffix. So, if we need to create 50 virtual machines, we don't need to individually name each one. We can just provide one name and add a numerical suffix to each. We're ready to create our new virtual machines. Now we can switch the virtual machine manager to see our new virtual machines running once they've been provisioned. We'll search for machines with finance in the name. Here we can see the two virtual machines we requested. They're up and running and ready for use. In this demo, You've seen how the System Center Virtual Machine Manager self-service portal can be used to streamline the process of requesting, creating, and managing virtual machine resources. Data center administrators and application owners both benefit from the increased flexibility and agility enabled by Microsoft Private Cloud Solutions. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit the Private Cloud website.